slide. You're still muted, Florence. Bottom left. Go ahead, Florence. Still muted. You're still muted, Florence. Just a second. Uh, okay, there you go. Go ahead. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am Florence Black, and I am the mission pre president for our mission ministry here at St. Luther MB Church. On behalf of our pastor, Charles E. Pope Jr., and our first lady, Jacqueline Pope, we welcome you to our first Women's Day virtual retreat. You are in for a treat today. So get ready to be engaged. We welcome you as we celebrate our theme during these trying times, a year of good success. You are in for a treat for our, our presenter, from our presenter today, so get ready to be engaged. Today's discussion will be hosted by Sister Jacqueline Pope, our first lady here at St. Luther, as I said. Okay, with that being said, Sister Pope. Good morning. Hello there, ladies. Thank you, Florence. Ladies, first of all, let me know if you can hear me. If you would, please, would you put some, some of those blue thumbs up on the Facebook live feed? Just give us some thumbs up and that'll let me know that you can see us and that you can also hear us pretty well. You know, if I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, hi, I'm Jacqueline Polk. I'm called Miss Jackie and First Lady. My husband is the pastor of St. Luther Missionary Baptist Church located in the heart of Jackson, Mississippi. And we are thrilled that you are joining us here on today. You know, typically we host a brunch or a mini retreat on the Saturday prior to our Women's Day. Well, this year is anything but typical. But you know, rather than focus in on what we can't do, we move forward with what we could do. And that leads us here to today, because I know this, it's powerful whenever and however you can bring the women of God together. And that's our purpose for today, to gather, to share, and to uplift. So make sure you're comfortable. Um, I have my coffee, if you have your coffee or your sweet tea, um, make sure you have your notepad. There's gonna be something you're going to find of interest. Take the time now to tag someone in your comment box so they can join in too. Uh, we can't do face-to-face, -face, but you can help us feel more like it's face-to-face -face by commenting and using the reaction buttons just to let us know that it's coming through and you're liking what you're hearing. You know, our theme year of good success may sound pretty ironic. 2020 is just making all of us shake our heads in disbelief. But despite the stress of all of this mess, God can still lead you and me to success, just as he did Joshua in our theme scripture. So before I introduce our first panel, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father God, Lord, you've brought us, you've carried us and protected us. Lord, we're here this day and we say thank you. Prepare our ears to hear and our hearts to receive all that you have for us. In your son Jesus' name, we say amen, amen. So let's take a look at our agenda. 
Tarshina, if you can pull up our slide. We've got some good discussion that's going to be taking place on this morning. Let our slide come up. We're going to begin. Yep, we'll advance to the next slide. I hope you all feel welcome now. We're going to begin with God's plan for success. There's a wonderful panel of ladies that's going to share that with you. We're gonna have a quick success in a capsule. What is success? Oftentimes we walk right past it and don't recognize it. We're also going to focus on manifestations of success around us. Coronavirus has stopped a lot, but it has not stopped the move of God. And so we're going to focus on success that we're seeing today. And then we're going to have brief comments on success in claiming your voice. And finally, we're going to have a blessing and prayer at the end. So right now, let me go. Oh, and throughout, if you have questions, Q and A's. We're going to try to capture those. I can't promise we can cover all of them in this setting, but we will at least have them posted later here on our page. But if you have a question, just drop it into the comment box and we'll try to capture some of those. Okay, right now I'd like to introduce our first speakers. These ladies are special to me. Well, all of these ladies are special to me. They're my friends. But this group of ladies is part of our Sister First Lady group here in Jackson, Mississippi. Lady Tanya Adams, Lady Brandy Carter, and Lady Michelle Walker are going to talk about God's plan for success. Again, relating back to Joshua's story. And then the one and only Beatrice, First Lady B, is going to talk about success in a capsule. Okay, ladies, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, First Lady Jackie. Good morning, ladies. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank First Lady Jackie for including us in your first virtual women's retreat. I consider it an honor and a blessing to be here with you all this morning. So we're going to go on and just dive right into your topic, God's plans for success, um, Joshua 1. Uh, verses five through nine, and Michelle and Brandy, I, I had to do a little background research when I was looking at these scriptures because we know at verse five, you can hear God, you God yeah. had um, chosen Joshua to lead the Israelites to the promised land. This was after That's Moses' right. death. So in my background, I wanted to know what was so special about Joshua? What made him the chosen person? You know, he was the son of Nun. Um, he was Moses' assistant. He was the one that helped hold Moses' arm up when he got tired. But I just really wanted to know what did God see in Joshua to make him the person to lead the people? Because most people think that Aaron would have been the most logical choice because he was Moses' brother. But you know what that says to me? That what people or man think is the logical choice is not God's logical choice. You better so, talk, Tanya. <laughs> no matter what your past may have been, yes. no matter yes. what they say you have done, <laughs> when God yes. chooses you, God Amen. will equip you. So that was Amen. one thing that stuck out to me is that, you know, Aaron probably was the one that they wanted, but God saw Joshua. So that was one thing. And then another thing that stuck out to me is that Joshua probably didn't realize it, but God was preparing him along the way. I think he may have been probably 80 years old when he led the Israelites to the promised land. But in those 80 years before, there was preparation. You know, he was enslaved for 40 years. Then he spent 40 years in the wilderness. Now let's talk about that wilderness experience, ladies. Some of, us. <laughs> right? some of us have some wilderness experience, oh, but yeah. I know through my wilderness experience, there have been some spiritual lessons. So yeah. my wilderness experiences have equipped me for the journey. And I think that's what God was doing with Joshua. He was equipping him. 
for the journey. Joshua probably didn't see it, but he was being equipped. So, you know, in your wilderness, ladies, even the ones that are watching with us, you know, in your wilderness, you learn to grow. You learn to trust God. You learn to persevere. And most importantly, you learn to depend on God. Because when you're in that wilderness, that's all you can see is God. That's all you can depend on is God. Right. So, Hallelujah. As I get ready to, Michelle, I'm going to give this to you because I know you have so much more to expound on. But look, listen. So to just sum this up for me. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> for me. God's plans for success, you know, number one, God's plan comes with a purpose. He knew Moses was not going to be the one to lead the Israelites to the promised land. So God already knew. So no matter what we're dealing with, God already knows. He has a purpose. And his purpose is far more better than our purpose. So sometimes we be like, well, Lord, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I got a purpose and all of that. So number <laughs> one, God's plans come with a purpose. Number two, every purpose is birthed from potential. Let me say that mm. again. Every purpose is birthed from potential. God saw, God saw Joshua's potential. God, uh, Joshua and Caleb were the only two that said, hey, we can take the land. They were the only two. God saw his faithfulness. So he said, hey, Joshua got potential. I can do something with this. So ladies, even when you think there's nothing there, God, there's potential. And God can <laughs> take that potential and use it and turn it into something greater. And then lastly, potential is fulfilled through perseverance. Don't give up. Don't ever, ever give up. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you are dealing with, persevere because I promise God's plan will show up and his plan that success story that's on the other end of that persevering trial oh my god you will have a hallelujah amen good time story so let me share you take it over from here and just, just tell, me, tell me how you can relate to Joshua and what God did for him Praise God, Tanya, lady, Tanya, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm just, I'm trying to hold back the tears because, I mean, we couldn't have a better opening to talk about the life of a Joshua, to talk about the plan for Joshua's life, to talk about the potential for Joshua's life. And not only that, if he just persevered through, there is success at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Praise oh. the Lord, because when you when you don't know what you don't know, but God knows the end of the story. Uh -huh. so the time we just can't give up. During this wilderness moment, we just can't give up because there is a plan for your life, and you can't give up now. And in the Bible, in the in chapter one of the Bible, it spoke to me. God gave God God gave Joshua three promises. God said, I want to remind you, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. My, my God. He said it three times in the text. In the book, in chapter one, he said, be strong and of good courage. Again, he said, be strong and very courageous. Then lastly, yes. he said, be strong and of good courage. That's confirmation from God that we're going to make it through this thing. We're going to make it through this time. We're going to make it through this tribulation. Whatever betide you, don't get weary. Keep on going. Don't give up because there is a, a hallelujah on the other side. There yes. is a praise on the other side. God got this thing on lock. Don't, All right. don't worry about what the what it looks like right now because there is a promise at the end of this. You will survive. Yes, we had to share some tears. That was part of the plan, Tanya. Thank you. We had to we had to pray longer. That was part of the plan. We had to suffer just a little while longer. That was part of the plan. But the goal is you're still standing. Hallelujah. You're still hey. standing. You're still smiling. You're still going. You're still chiming in. You're still talking. Oh, God got a reason for your life. If you just hold on just a little while longer, if you just hold on, because in the text, it says three times. That's confirmation. That's fulfillment. That's, 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 that's God covering you. 
one that's God covering you. I do have notes, but Tanya got me started. Number one, you stand, you stand unity with God. There's unity. So when I saw be strong and courage, number the first time God said unity, he said, stick with me, no matter what. Stay with me, Joshua. Don't, don't take your eye off the plan. I started it with Moses, but are you going to lead my people over to the promised land? So you got to stick with me, number one. So that was the first, be strong and of good courage. Then number two, he said, be strong and very courageous. Well, number two to me said, stay balanced. Mm -hmm. You got to stay balanced. You got to stay on your knees. You got to mm -hmm. stay focused. You got to look up to the hills which come at your help because all your help going to come from the Lord, Joshua. You can't do this thing by yourself. So you need a little balance in your life. You got to realize that I give it and I take it. So I'm going to give you balance as you try, as you trot through this thing. And then lastly, and I'm going to end because I know Brandy is going to take us on over to glory. <laughs> so so, so and, and the end is three stands for Trinity. Hallelujah. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's all we need. <laughs> but so Joshua was saying, God was reminding Joshua at the end. He said again, Joshua, be strong and of good courage because Trinity got you covered. My, my God. Hallelujah today. He got you covered, baby. He got you covered no matter what you're going through. I'm helping myself no matter what you're going through. He got you covered. Got you covered. Those tears has has a testimony behind them tears. The Bible says that God, God will fill the tears up and sprinkle them. He, he, he bottles all your tears. That's what the Bible says, that he'll bottle all those tears and then sprinkle, sprinkle them on you as glory and remind us what we've been through. But I want you to hold on. What I want you to be strong, be courageous. Be God got you. One, two, three, you're covered. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Brandy, close us out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tanya and Michelle, hallelujah. Y'all got me over here on fire. Praise him. I think about the potential. I think about the perseverance. I think about standing and having balance. There's nothing that you ladies said that I can't repeat at this time. And I can't think about this year of success without thinking of struggle. When I got this text, I could not think but the word struggle. I think about trying times, trials, tribulations. And right here, I'm thinking about how Moses had died. And that was Joshua's mentor. Yeah. Can you think about the weight that was on this man? He had learned everything from him. He had set him up for success. And yes. he didn't even realize it. He said, hey, the same thing I did for him, <laughs> I'll do for you. It's he a said, setup. <laughs> yes, a perfect setup. He said, I did it for them. Wherever your feet may go, I'll I'm bless you. For you. Yes. So I think about uh, the COVID, how the old way of things that we are we yeah. were doing is not going to work now. Yeah. God is doing a new thing in this year of success. But however, we have to be open to that. We have to be ready to receive that. So I think about two things here, ladies. I think about here. It said that he appointed Joshua, the divine appointment. He had prepared him for this. So you think about being strong and courageous. Why did he have to tell him two and three and multiple times there that to be strong and courageous? He knew these times were going to come. Hallelujah. Yes. He knew that we could not get faint and weary and well doing at this time. That's right. It's not the time to give up, saints. It's time to get yes. up and show up and let God. Yes. At this time. <laughs> it's my time to lay down. It's time to get down. So the enemy meant it for evil. However, my God meant it for good. Yes. So we know that all things are working together. Romans over there told us that, but we have to trust and believe that. So we have the divine appointment and we have to continue to acknowledge that. So even when I talk about this all the time, our spiritual eye is what we're going to have to look at right now. There have been yes. so many new things that God has did in this year of success. He has birthed businesses. He has birthed families. He has restored families. He has refined us. He has renewed us. He has given us new meanings of life. To get back to the basics of the Bible, what yes. works, 
love, time, family, what matters the most. And however, in this text, I also think about when we're being of the courage and things, the assurance that God gave us. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors and would give to them. Hallelujah. But however, he gave us uh, instruction right there. He said, study this book day and night. Right. Meditate on it so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Hallelujah. The same God that took Moses through to part the Red Sea was the same God that took Joshua yes. to yeah. Jordan River. It's going to be yes. the same God to deliver us whatever we're going through in this season. Hallelujah. And I don't know what it looks like. I can't tell you where we're going, but I do know this, that God is already there. Hallelujah. Yes. He has a plan. As my sister said, he has a purpose and all to be kept by Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We care about okay. him, but we couldn't even keep ourselves. Yes. Hallelujah. We didn't know about these jobs. We didn't know about what was going to go on with the schools, hallelujah. But he is doing a new work. And we have to understand that our old ways are not the new ways. And his ways are surely not our ways. That's so right. I don't know who you are out there. I see my sisters here. I want you to do exactly what the Bible does. That's and right. what it says. The same God back then is the same God now. You be encouraged. You That's be right. faithful. You That's stand right. strong. You That's stick right. to the Bible. You find your balance. You yes. find your potential and let God birth you into that purpose. That's Amen. right. That's yeah, right. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 over to you, Sister Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> The Bible said, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Yes. Do not worry. He's with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. He said, I got you covered on every end and each and every way you go. We, he said, you're blessed going in. You're blessed coming out. No matter yes. what may come up to us. Uh, against you you're blessed baby you're blessed yes. sir you bless elder you bless you bless preacher you bless pastor because god got you god got you right where he wants you he got your attention so he said be be not afraid be not discouraged and well doing for god will be with you even to the very end every day of your life Stay encouraged, my people. Stay yes. encouraged, my sister. Stay Glory. encouraged, my brother. Hallelujah. Stay encouraged. Oh, yes. I love it. God is a keeper. Hallelujah. Yes. He will keep you. <laughs> I know a God that will never leave you, never forsake you. Hallelujah. I tried him for myself. I yes. know he'll wipe away tears in the midnight hour. Yes, yes, he will. I know he'll hold you when you nobody else is there to hold you. If you don't see nobody, God see you. Hallelujah. You just hold on to God's unchanging hand. He see you. He know you. And he knows what's best for you. you whatever decision you got to make, trust God. Trust, trust the process. Yes. Know that God is on your side. Yes. He's, he got you. And if I can say anything, I'm just, I didn't got excited because God is a keeper. Yes, so Lord. this text reminded me that God is a keeper. Hallelujah. He is a keeper. Yes. He is a healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you cry right now, let the tears flow. If it's hard right now, it won't last always. You just stay in God's hand. The Bible said that, he, that God, that, that the, the devil never plucked you out of God's hand. Never. So you just stay in, in the word of God. Amen. Yes. I ain't mean to chime back in. He is Hallelujah. a keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is Hallelujah. a keeper. Hallelujah. I'm going to mute my, my, oh God, he is a keeper. <laughs> my, my, my God today. That's he it. will keep That's you. It. When you don't even know how to keep yourself. When Thank you think you're about to lose your mind. He is a keeper. That's Hallelujah, it. Jesus. It. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, God. Come on, Pope, or whom else? He's a, he's a yes. Oh, God. Yes, yes, God. Yes, he will. Yes, he, he will. will. Keep you. He will keep mm. you. You can't even keep yourself. That's right. That's right. My, 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 my. Turn away. God but is God. right there. And but God has never fails. He promised it. He's going to do it. That's right. Three times. <laughs> That's right. Three times. Confirmation, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
Ah, uh, my mama. Come on, Lady B. Come on. Okay, y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. Good morning, ladies. Uh, so look, I don't even know where to where to start. I have all these notes written down, but Tanya, you uh you started off and you started talking about being in purpose, right? And I'm like, I haven't talked to Tanya. So Tanya don't know what I wrote down, but purpose is all in what in my notes. And then Michelle come behind you and talk about being on your knees in prayer. Prayer is all in my notes. And then Lady Brandy come back and she started talking about trials and tribulations. That's all in my notes. And none of us have talked. So I already know this is a divine connection right now. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Michelle, you just talked about, you just talked about the Trinity. That just happened right now. We have not talked and all of this is in my notes for today. Um, uh -oh. Can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Okay. Um, so let me just talk about um, success in the capsule, right? Um, so the theme for today is good success, right? And when you ask most people, what is good success? Folks will start, start naming houses and cars and, you know, these material possessions or what kind of business they own, you know, what their kids are doing, different things like that. But that's not success, right? Um, really, success is making a difference in someone else's life at the end of the day. That's what success is. Um, and we live in an era now, especially with COVID-19, everybody's on social media and everybody's talking about, um, you know, everybody's now, you know, are these social media gurus or social media influencers and they want to tell you what success is, right? Through their pictures, through their posts, right? And if you, um, and if you look at them, most of those things are carnal things, right? Mm -hmm. They're carnal things, and um, but a lot of people get caught up in those carnal things. And so uh -huh. I find myself, um, you know, kind of pulling women specifically to the side saying, don't get caught up in that hype of these quote unquote social media influencers trying to persuade you on what good success looks like. Because uh -huh. this is not it. It's not about houses. It's not about cars. It ain't about your boo. It ain't about what your kids are doing. That's not good success, right? Good success really is what you're doing with the gift God has given you, the gifts, the talents, the blessings God has given you to instill and impact other folks' lives. And so that all ties into, into our purpose, right? So I had wrote purpose down as um, one of my little bullet points here. And I said, um, truth is success is simply the fulfillment of your purpose in life the completion of the assignment for which you were created for. It is your willingness to overcome whatever objection, obstruction, opposition, and oppression that may be hindering you from fulfilling your God-given purpose, right? So, I, so going back to what I said a few minutes ago about trying to instill in women not to get caught up in those things that they feel are, make them successful, you know, um, and really get and get find out what their God given purpose is, right? And um, and I and I say that from a personal um experience because for I want to I don't want to tell my age, but um, from 1999 till about 2008, um, I was um, the public relations director for Best Buy, and I traveled the world. Um, I I lived out of a suitcase. Um, and and made a lot of money, more money than I could spend and, and thought that, um, you know, I built this nice house in the suburbs because that was a goal of mine. I thought that was success, right? Um, my parents were still back in Mississippi and so they were proud of me. So whenever holidays would come up and family would get together, my dad especially would, um, you know, would talk about the things that I had going on. But what my parents did not know, what my friends did not know, and I'm about to get emotional, what they did not know is that with all of that, and all of that, those things that people, the carnal people would think that's success. What people did not know is I was going home at night with a void. They had no clue that I didn't feel successful. Yeah. They had no clue because to the world I was successful. But to me, I had no success because I had this emptiness on the inside of me, right? And I remember it was about to be the holiday season. I was going to travel back home to Mississippi to visit my parents. And I was trying to figure out in my mind how I was going to tell my parents I was going to walk away from this big lucrative job that they were so yes. proud of me about. Mm -hmm. I was going to walk away. 
And um, so I remember getting there and, and, and standing in my mom's kitchen, the same kitchen she has right now in Brandon, Mississippi, shaking in my boots because I had to say, mama, I know y'all proud. I know y'all have all these pictures on around the house of me with all these cool people, but guess what? That ain't success for me. I'm not happy. Mm. I have a voice so deep in my heart. Mm. I had to tell them that. Mm. And I was shaking in my boots. And I remember um, my dad, of course, you know, being proud of his baby girl, you know, he was a little sad, but my mama understood what I was going through. Because she said to me, you know, as a little girl, I knew God had something else for you to do. She said, it never has been about money for you. And um, that's all I needed to hear. So a friend of mine gave me this book. It's called The Dream Giver. Mm. And it's about Bill Wilkinson. And I was reading that book. It brought back my childhood dream that God instilled in me as a child. And as a child, he instilled in me um that, that i wanted that i was going to infiltrate the entertainment industry because it was so dark it was just so full of darkness and he was like you're going to be the light and i remember saying yes to god that particular night after i prayed to him about the direction to send my life in right i'm because at this time now i'm living in chicago in this big old house in the suburbs by myself by myself ladies by myself no husband because i was chasing success success yeah by myself lonely Void going to church on Sunday, but how many of you know just going to church ain't it? Ain't it? Ain't it? So you got to take those what you learn at church on Sunday, which are in the Bible class, and what you learn from meditating on the word day and night and apply it to your life. It's called life applications. That's right. So once I did that and I said yes to the Lord and allowed Him to lead the way for me, I, I said, Um, okay, I'm gonna start this Christian blog. For that first year, ladies, I didn't make a dollar. I lost money. I lost money. But guess what? I was the happiest I had ever been. <laughs> because I was in purpose. I was following the purpose God had for my life. And let me tell you, some people always ask, well, how do I know what my purpose is? Get in the word. If you get in the word and build a relation, an intimate relationship with the father, sometimes you got to get on your face and you got to cry till your hair sweaty and your edge is nappy. Like we just did a few minutes ago. You got to do it. I mean, if you really want to chase what God has for you, your purpose in life, you have to do it. You got to do, that's the hard work. See, folks don't know the work that it takes to get to your purpose. See, they, uh, just, see the end result. they just see the end result. They don't know that you got to, there's a lot of late nights. A crying, saying, Lord, why me? Being crucified by people that you thought were your friend? Betrayed? Lied on? Because you're walking in purpose. Because see, I tell you all the time. And be careful when you want God to give you what, tell you what your purpose is. Because once he tell you what your purpose is, you're going to have to let some people and some things oh. go. Yes, Lord. Go and ahead. everybody ain't ready to do that. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes um, ladies that's out there watching and listening, you got to choose you. You got to choose you. I'm here to tell you right now, when you choose you and what God has for you, everything else going to fall into place. Say it's going to fall into place. Ain't no need to be afraid of that. It's going to fall into place because that's how God, that's how God works. That's his will for your life. That's his will for your life. So I tell folks all the time. So when I, when I started the blog and that first year I make a dollar, I, I lost money. The little money I had in the bank was gone. I thought I was going to have to start borrowing money. That's how bad it had gotten. But all of a sudden God just started making things happen. He started opening doors. People that I just dreamed of meeting, people that I just read about in magazines, he put me in front of. Put me in front of. I remember two years ago, I was went to the um, oh Jesus, went to the um Super Bowl Gospel Awards. Cece Winans is my favorite gospel artist, not just because she sings so eloquently, but because of her life. Mm -hmm. She lives, she walks the Bible. She does. She doesn't waver. She is who she is unapologetically and i love that about her so i remember when she when she was in front of me i thought i was gonna freeze up but in that moment god said speak over her life hmm. he said tell her what i'm telling you so i just started pouring into cc that woman couldn't do nothing but hug me and i couldn't do nothing but cry because i was just telling her what god said because i knew that she had issues with her son producing her last album because it wasn't her style you know, she was a chat. Oh, she had an issue with that, being led by her son. 
on this last album. But that album went on to win her Grammys and all type of awards. And I told her when I saw her that day, I said, I'm here to tell you, God told me to tell you, this is your season. Every award season you're gonna win. Every award that's out there for you, you're gonna win. And she did, because God told me to tell her that. And in that moment I realized, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is how I'm using my God given gifts, talents to shed light on the entertainment industry. It ain't about me being out there in front, but it's about using my platform to help these other people who have the God given talents and abilities to uplift the kingdom of God, period, to shed light on the kingdom. So when we talk about this whole thing of good success, like I said, it's not about money. It ain't about material things. It's not about cars and who your boo is and you know everybody want, want a Barack Obama, all that stuff. Let me tell y'all something, ladies. Michelle paid a price. Mm. If you didn't read her book and you didn't see her um her tour, Michelle told you she had to give up her job. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. She had to she had to pay a price. Yep. So people want want the good success at the end. They want what Joshua got. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to do the work, but they, there's work behind that. You got to pray. You got to stay on your news. You got to be faithful. You, you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to meditate on his word day and night. And only oh. then will you have good success. And I'm going to end with this. I just, I just have a, a quick note that I want to take, take to the women that's out there listening. When we trust and depend on God, heart, mind, and soul, he will empower us to do more than we ever could imagine. He will give us and help us to be more than enough. He has already given us everything we need to become the women he created us to be, spiritually, personally, professionally, and beyond. That's all I got. Amen. Amen. Yes. Ooh, bless God. Bless uh, God. Yes. Bless Praise God. God. Praise God. Yes, sister. Yes. Did we get off to a strong start? Yes, yes. I thank God for the discussion on God's plan for our success and also descriptions of what success truly is. You know, ladies, as I'm looking, um, there's, no, there's no questions. Everything you all said was well understood. <laughs> there's lots of hearts and lots of thumbs up. You really have blessed every listener that's been on this call so far and and we just say god bless you for a powerful word um since i'm not seeing any questions in the in the feed here i prepared to move forward i think we have everybody ready on our second panel so ladies those of you that are on that first panel you can stop your video and and um and mute yourselves our second group, we are talking about manifestations of success today. What does it look like? And starting us off, Christina Bowman Smith is going to focus on success in your mind and body. She has a powerful testimony of her family's survival of COVID 19. And then Alexis Kerr is going to talk about success in your professional life. Alexis is one of my mentees from back in the day at General Motors and Delphi, and I couldn't be more proud to have her on with us today. And then Lasonia Hall from Philadelphia um, Baptist Church in Oxford, Mississippi, is going to join us to talk about success in our relationships. Uh, coronavirus has changed how we connect with each other, but there's some lessons in it that we can do to make our connections even more meaningful. And then last, but certainly not least, evangelist Kathy Bowman. That was her voice you heard on her song at the start of today. She has uh, released, I am praying for you. If you didn't hear it well, you need to go online and look it up, it's powerful. Evangelist Lady Kathy Bowman is going to speak about success in your spiritual life. And so let's welcome on our second group of panelists and you can prepare to begin now. I think we need, uh, I'm not seeing uh, Christina. Christy, Christina. I'm here. 
here. There she is. And there's Kathy, all right. And LaSonia and Alexis. Okay, all right. Well, Chrissy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, I don't, it says that I can't share my video because it has been disabled. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, I can see. No, it's just flip over. There you go. Oh, good morning, everyone. Let me just make sure my camera's nice and cleaned off. There we go. Good morning. Good morning, First Lady Poe, my Aunt Jackie. <laughs> I love you, dear. So much. Thank you um, for considering me um, to be able to, to share with all these amazing women. Um, I want to give honor to uh, Pastor Charles Pope, my uncle Charles, and um, St. Lutheran Baptist Church. I really appreciate um, this opportunity, and I'm so grateful. The ladies before me have been amazing. They were getting me fired up and I had, you know, a tear um, because I could I could relate um, to being in the wilderness and, um, you know, just with our experience from COVID and I'll share that and I'll try to be brief because there's so many layers to it. Um, but I'll give you guys the short version. Um, our experience with coronavirus, it actually affected my entire household. And I wanna say starting back in uh, March, around the second week of March is when we realized what having, what was beginning to happen to us. Um, just to rewind back to February, my children, I have two, two daughters, a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And they both were extremely sick. Um, I want to say the entire month of February and part of March, and they missed school. They missed a month of school. And I was like, you know, I had to reach out to the teachers, like, has any other child been this sick? And nobody had been that sick. So fast forward back to March, around March 13th, we started hearing um, more talks on the news about like this virus that was coming. You know, it was kind of downplayed. So we were like, yeah, you know, well, you know, I, I, it probably won't touch us. But on March 13th, my husband came home early from work, which he never does. My husband is a workaholic and he's like, I don't feel good. And I'm like, OK, well, for you not to feel good enough to come home early, you know, was a little alarming. And the next day I woke up and I had no voice at all. And I was I had this cough that followed behind it that it lasted like days. And I'm like, okay, I have this, I have no voice. I cannot talk. I have this horrible cough. I started getting a sore throat and my husband started getting more sick. Now, by this time, the girls had gotten a little better. I had sent one of my, my four-year-olds to school for one day. And that same day, I got a call from her school saying, you know, once you guys pick her up today, don't bring her back next week. Um, you know, we're done. And I'm like, what do you mean we're done? And that's when Michigan had their order from the governor that we were shutting schools down. And I'm like, okay, this is serious. Maybe we need to go get checked out. Uh, we woke up the next day and we both were feeling horrible. Uh, and my husband started, he has asthma. He started having trouble with his breathing. And so I said, you know what? We can't play with this. Like we need to get to the doctor. We need to see what's wrong. We go to the doctor that night and by this time, there was nobody allowed to go into the hospital anymore um, in Michigan. Michigan got hit bad around this time. And so we waited in a drive through line to get a coronavirus test. And so the line was about three hours long. We were into the line. They sent out nurses to your car to take your vitals. Um, at this time, I was like, I don't need to get tested. As long as you get tested, we know what our whole household is dealing with. And so he got his vitals read by the nurse and all of his vitals were extremely low and the most concerning one was his oxygen his oxygen was out of 100 percent. his oxygen was down to like 89 percent. and so they were the nurses were concerned and they were like well you really need to see the doctor so we waited in this line three hours gone by i haven't seen it he started feeling better he's like i feel fine breathing so let's just go home like maybe this is not what it is we go home 
wake up the next day, he's completely worse. So we're like, we need to go back. This time we're just gonna wait to see the doctor. And he was very concerned at this time. His inhalers weren't working. I was getting worse. We went back, we got back in line. We saw the nurses and they said, well, I know that you're saying you're having trouble breathing. We can see on your the way your chest is moving that you're having trouble breathing, but for some reason, your oxygen level is at a 99%. And we're like, huh? How is this possible? And so he were like, he was like, okay, we're still gonna wait and to see the doctor. So we saw the doctor and the doc, he was like, doctor, I cannot breathe. You know, my treatments aren't working, nothing's working. And he said, I can see that you're having the tr trouble breathing. He said, but because your vitals are so low, there is nothing we can do for you. We have to send you home and I'll write you a prescription for another inhaler in case you run out, but this is all I can do for you. And we were floored. And um, he said, you know, you guys have all the symptoms for coronavirus, but at this time, I can't even give you a test because we're out. And so we went home and I was like, Lord, what is about to happen in my house? And, you know, at that moment, like a, a little bit of a fear came over me. And I said, you know, I'm not going to give into this fear. You know, we have to fight this out. And, you know, we went home and I said, Lord, give me the formula. What, what do I need to do to take care of my family at this point? Because we are getting worse. I'm getting afraid. My husband is afraid. What do we need to do? And at that moment, I, a peace actually came over me. And I heard the Lord tell me he wasn't supposed to go in that hospital. Now, now we know, fast forward months later, that a lot of people that have gone on ventilators never came off ventilators and once you go a lot of people have gone into those hospitals they never came back out and you know I wasn't allowed if my husband would have gone in I was not allowed to go in with him and thinking back and seeing my husband's personality he might not have come out of that had he been in the hospital dealing with what he was dealing with he might not have come out of it he might have been like you know what I'm done I'm scared you know I give up and so I praise God that, you know, he intervened at that moment. I didn't understand, but I know it was God that kept him out of that hospital. Now, rewinding back to what we went through at home, <laughs> once we got sent back, we ended up so bad and, and worse for my husband, I would say. I was bad too, but I was so concerned for my family that I ignored <laughs> every symptom that I had. And... Um, you know, I put on my hat. I was, I was mama. I was nurse. I was doctor. I was prayer warrior. I did not sleep. When I tell you, my husband even has a joke that during like our sickness, all I did was pray and cook, pray and cook. And so I'll get to that. And, um, you know, we got home and, and my husband got so bad to one night, I went upstairs and my husband was, his lips were purple. He was cold to the touch. Um, he had passed out that day. Um, he could not breathe at all. Um, you know, he, he, his whole body was just cold and stiff. He had lost so much weight. And he expressed that he was afraid to go to bed because he did not know if he was gonna wake up. And honestly, that night I felt the same thing. And I said, Lord, I can't, I can't give up here. And I went downstairs and the enemy actually got into my head that night. My kids were getting better, but all of a sudden that night, they were both wheezing in their sleep. I wasn't getting any better. I had put my family, I had listened to the Lord. He told me to put my family on a vegan diet, no processed foods no meats. I don't eat meat, but my husband, no meats, uh, no dairy, just strictly herbs, just strictly foods that grow out of the ground, nothing processed, just whatever I was making, you know, just that grew from the ground. And the enemy got in my head. He said, look at your family. Look at your husband up there dying. Look at your children. They can't even breathe and you're sick. You think this is working? You think all of these prayers and all this healthy eating is working for you it's not you're killing your family and I had a, a moment and I said no I, I can't let the enemy get in my head like this I call, I got on the phone and I called 
my tribe. I have a tribe. And I said, y'all, I'm at the lowest. I said, I feel defeated. I don't know what's happening here. I don't, I feel like I'm praying and praying and praying and nothing is happening. We're not getting better. My husband is getting worse. And everybody was so calm when I called them and they're like, Christina, we gonna pray. We got this. And they all encouraged me and they pushed me. And, you know, they just, they were reading scriptures to me. And I said, okay, Lord, I got this. And it built up such a, such a, a power and peace in me. And I stood up and I said, not tonight and not my family. And I, I, I kicked that fear to the side. And I said, I am praying again tonight. I am administering my herbs in the middle of the night again. And this is going to work. And I said, I may not see right now what you're doing, Lord, but I trust you and I am healed. My husband is healed. My children is healed. My household is healed. And I am just waiting for the manifestation of that healing in the name of Jesus. And so I got up, I prayed through my house. Like I had never prayed before. We rebuked the enemy. I opened my front door and I kicked the enemy out. I mean, it was war in my home. Because I had refused, I had made up in my mind that I had, I was going to refuse to let the enemy win over my family. We were not going to get taken out by no coronavirus. And so I went to bed and I woke up and my husband, I was scared. I was like, okay, we had quarantine. I was separate with my children downstairs. And I went upstairs and I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to find when I open this door, but just be with me, God. And I opened the door and my husband was still there. He couldn't walk. He was still weak, but he was still there. The Lord kept him yet another day. And so I said, okay, Lord, I trust you. And we're, we're going to get through this. And, you know, slowly but surely, you know, it took about three good weeks, but we started seeing a turnaround and I did not lose my faith. I did not stop praying. I did not stop you know, being the nurse of my home, the nurse of my children and the doctor of my husband. I did not stop administering those herbs and those, those natural remedies and those natural medicines. I did not stop our vegan diet because I knew that God was going to turn it around. And that night, you know, I had been better, but that night I, I went to bed and I woke up and I was coughing up blood. And I said, God, you know, I thought... <laughs> I thought we were seeing like the light from this, like what is happening? And what I did notice is that there was not an ounce of fear that came over me at that time. And I said, okay, God, I'm coughing up blood. This is not normal. I called my nurse friends and they said, Christina, this is very concerning. Um, this is a very bad sign of coronavirus. When you start coughing up blood, that's mostly at the end of people's uh, journey with it and they go septic from there and, and they don't make it. You need to go to the emergency. And I was like, okay. And I'm hearing this from two separate nurse friends. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to the emergency room. I said, but you know what? I'm going to pray first. And I still had no fear. And I called yet another tribe member. I said, brother, I'm having this spell of coughing up blood and I said it's been going on for about a half hour every time I cough there's blood that comes out and I'm now spitting it in the sink at this time and I don't mean to be graphic but it is what it is and because I was taking pictures of it to send to my friends my nurse friends you know so they can inform me of what it was and um as he started praying for me on the phone he said you know what we're gonna pray like we're not gonna have any fear we're gonna pray and I'm gonna declare these scriptures so he's praying and we're declaring the scriptures and as he's praying I'm still coughing up blood and he said you know what you got some blessed oil and I said I do he said go get the blessed oil and I said okay God, I grabbed my blessed oil because it I had been using it all this time anyway so it was right on hand and uh, he said I know this might sound crazy but I need you to drink a, a couple drops of that blessed oil mind you I'm still coughing up blood this entire time and I said, that doesn't sound crazy to me at all. We're going to do this. So I took the anointed oil and he's praying. He said, anoint your ear. I anointed my ears. He said, anoint your chest. I anointed my chest. He said, now drink two drops of the, that anointed oil. I drank two drops of that anointed oil. And I continued to cough. But at this time when I coughed, I, I spit it in the sink again. 
it was not deep red blood anymore. It was brown. And I said, oh God, now what, Lord? And I continued to cough. And every time I coughed and spit it out, it was lighter brown, lighter brown, lighter brown. And then the last time I spit, y'all, it was completely clear. And I had saw a manifestation of healing right before my eyes. Thank you, Lord. My Lord. God healed me. He healed my family. Yes. Yes. I did not have to be here, standing here, sitting here in front of you ladies today. But God saw a purpose in my life. I was supposed to be sitting here sharing this testimony with each and every one of you for whatever reason. And I am just so grateful. I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful for what he had, what he put me through just so I can share today. Whatever reason it was, I am here. I'm standing. I want to encourage you guys. Never give up. Never praying. Success is not always what the young lady said before me it's not always material it's not always you know what job you have it's being obedient to the lord it's passing the test it's getting in your word it's finding real life success being rich in the lord <clears throat> having a healthy family having a healthy home that's success i feel successful when I can walk, wake up in the morning and my family is healed. I, I have success. Or I feel success when I wake up in the morning and I still see my children and my husband and they're healthy and I'm giving them healthy foods. And, and we're getting through this pandemic. And, um, you know, I just, I just want to really encourage you guys, don't give up no matter what it looks like. Keep praying. Keep fighting. I could not give up. Mm -hmm. I did not see healing. It took a whole month of, for, for, for us to see that manifestation of healing. And there's so many hours in a month and you talking about, Lord, when is this gonna happen? I didn't see it, but I'm a living testimony today that God will do what he promises that he will do. So keep the faith, stay encouraged, have a tribe, get you some prayer warriors and yes, people that's going to encourage you when you're at your lowest. God has not given up us the spirit of fear, but we do fear. We come to that point. Get you some people that's going to pray you through when you cannot pray yourself through. Get you some people in your right, corner that's, right. that's going to push you and tell you, Christina, uh, get up. Get up oh, and pray. Please. You're not going to sit here. You're not going to fall you know, to victim to the enemy's plan. Get you some people in your corner, do your research, um, adopt a healthy lifestyle. It is so important. You know, our bodies are our is our temple. We only get one. Take care of yourselves, especially in a time like this. We don't know what's going on. We don't know if it's in the air. They don't even know what's going on. Nobody knows. Be prepared by having a healthy mind and a healthy body so that if something does happen to come to your doorstep, you will overcome it. I want to yeah. encourage you. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I don't know each, each of you, but I love you all with the love of the Lord. You know, I am here. If anybody has questions, I get a lot of people that um, inbox me and ask me questions when they feel like they're becoming sick or they have family members that are ill. You know, if I, Jackie, wants to share my information with anybody who needs it, I am more than willing to communicate with anyone who has questions. Um, if you want to, if you need me to help you adopt a healthy lifestyle, set up meal plans, I am giving my services to you. Um, please be encouraged and trust in the Lord. Thank you so much for listening to my testimony and thank you so God. much. For Praise the Lord. But praise Hello. God. Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Ooh, Chrissy, oh my God. So powerful. So yes. Hey, I'll tell you, like you say down here, won't he do it? Won't he do it? He will do it. <laughs> won't he do it? Yes. yes, he will when you trust him. I thank God. All right, Alexis Kerr, would you Lady. Know? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I feel so blessed by the last speaker. Hopefully all of you can hear me quite clearly. I'm super excited to be here, uh, First Lady. 
Polk, um, you know, a mentor, a friend, a confidant, you know, a woman of God that I've been able to look to over the years. And obviously, Pastor, you know, a great mentor as well, um, had the opportunity to work with him at Delphi and GM. So definitely been blessed to ask um, for the opportunity to speak today. Um, so much has been said that has filled, you know, truly filled my heart. And when I think of the year of good success, I think that title is so important because it's changing the narrative in our minds as women of God of how this year is going to turn out. And so, you know, when we listen to the narrative on the news and everywhere around us, it's always such negative. First, there was COVID, then Black Lives Matter or civil unrest then the presidential election or whatever, you know, like there's so much chaos and so much noise in the system. When I think of the year of good success, of God's success, that's the mindset that we've got to own and take charge of and believe so that we can receive everything that God has for us to receive in that mindset. And I, I want you all to walk away today with three things. The first one is really that you can have that professional life and that personal life and that spiritual life. Um, everything that we see around us says that you can only be a professional in your professional life. You can't be this God um, driven woman and focused woman. You can't love the Lord. You can't speak about God at work or, or if you're in the spiritual realm, it's almost like your life have to, has to be segmented and it all can't be you, but truthfully who God created us to be as women of God is that we can have these professional careers and be extremely, uh, prudent and, um, goal driven, but we also can have this beautiful spiritual life where we're growing in God's grace and we're learning about him. And then we also can have this wonderful family with children, with community um, where we're helpful. And so the first thing is that I want you all to think that you have to have that you can have spirit with God. You can have. And then you've got to ask. The scripture says, ask um, seek, ask for what you need, seek and you shall find and knock and the doors will be opened unto you. So we, God, we, we've got to rely on him. And so we've got to ask for those things in those spiritual, um, in those professional careers, ask for that promotion that you know you do. Ask for those opportunities, ask for those additional resources, ask for that additional time that you need to spend with your family. You gotta ask. Most of the time, we don't take the opportunity to ask. We psych ourselves out in our mind and say, they are not going to, I can't do that because that's you, that's not God. And so we, if we begin to ask for the things that we need to be successful, we'll begin to have so much more. And most of the time, um, we train ourselves to not ask for what we need, work with supposedly the scraps that we're given to make something out of nothing. But then as you start to see others ask, they start to move further ahead because they're just calling out for that assistance. And, and sometimes we, you know, just listening to some of these stories earlier, you know, we find ourselves in need of help. And all we need to do is ask, ask God, ask our friends, ask our family. Don't feel like we have to take on everything. I think that's one of the things or fallacies as women of color, we tend not to ask for the additional help that we need. Sometimes we need resources for our young people, our kids at home. We're trying to manage our husbands, our careers, our family, our extended family. We might be the only person working with a wage that's that's you know taken care of, we, we gotta start opening up and asking, that's us. The second thing, when I think about the cultural success that we need in, in corporate environments is we got all the skills. We, we've got all the skills, all degrees, we need access, we need access. That is the thing that women of color need. We need access. We have people in significant places, but we don't start to talk to them. We don't start to leverage those resources. It, I working in my role currently at Cadillac, responsible for all multicultural marketing. 
I do my best to look out for other people of color. How can I um, give opportunities, for first opportunities to people who want to work with large brands, people who want to be brought into the fold of GM? My number one job is to, yes, sell cars and trucks, but, but just behind that and just as important is my role and responsibility to give access to other men and women who are Hispanic, African-American, Asian-American, LGBTQ. It's about that access for people who are doing excellent things in, in community, excellent things when we think about um, not necessarily marching, but speaking truth, excellent things when you think about being a subject matter expert, excellent things in, in, move, in movements like um, civil unrest. And so it's about how do we make those linkages? How do we get access to companies, especially now when we think about 40% of the businesses that are going out of businesses are owned by people of color. Women of color tend to be even below that amount. So when you start to know about the wage gaps, the pay gaps, it's about access for uh, women especially, but access in um, these large corporations, these small corporations, and finding ways to help uh, support small business. Um, the last thing is really about um, the young lady before me said it. I hear the word tribe. I hear the word your, your core group, your sister friends. But why don't we start to, to create groups of blessed friends, these women of God that will encourage you that will send scripture, send, send jokes to keep you uh, in the midst of everything that's going on, jokes to keep you laughing, that will pray for you when you're getting ready for these interviews, when you, when you, when you get let go from a job opportunity, that can give you highlights, just words of encouragement, things that they're working on that they just need you to support. That blessed circle of friends, and I take that from um, uh, Another panel that I heard last week, it was talking about having that friend circle to support one another, to throw name drop your, your girlfriend's name in, in other groups that she may not have the opportunity to be in. That's what we got to do at a critical time like this, a critical time in our nation, a critical time for our church communities. We got to be supporting one another. There's, there's going to be a number, number of people who don't have jobs, who don't have careers that they once had. They have to let go of car fantastic careers that they had now, make decisions of, you know, am I going to stay home with my young children or am I going to stay home and now become a teacher, an educator versus going out to a job I may or may not have any longer. And so we've got to be super focused on supporting and setting up our blessed friends. How can we get that? that group of women that we are supporting, that we're encouraging, that we are there for, that's so important. So again, you, you gotta have that spirit of, you can have obviously with God the Father, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. So it's that you can have spirit, it's that access. We're so educated, but it's that access that we have to give to one another and ask for in places for ourselves. And then it's about that encouragement and prayer, whether you're in the boardroom or you at home on your knees in the bedroom, you have got to be praying each and every day. The enemy, and sometimes our friends are our enemies. That's the real part of it. Sometimes our friends and our families tend to be the enemy, but the enemy, we have to pray. And we also have to remember that we are the day. Sometimes we're the enemy at times. And so we've got to, you know, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in God's sight. Don't think you're going to be successful in your professional life without being successful in your, your spiritual life. Don't think you're going to be successful in your professional life without being successful in your personal life. God is really at the focus of every single, every single thing we do. He supplies all of our needs. And if we have this year of success mindset first, the year of God's success mindset, that will manifest itself in so many ways. As women of color, looking at all of these opportunities that are available, you got to think I can have a job and a personal life. I can have a successful career and be a spiritual warrior on fire for God. You can.
with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you absolutely can. And so let this be, you know, again, the year of your success, support one another, encourage one another, and trust that regardless of what we see, God is manifesting and brewing fantastic things, fantastic things in a year and a time like this. Amen. For women of color, there's going to be so many opportunities for us to rally around each other, mm. for us to support each other, for us to continue to uplift lift our men. There's going to be so mm. many opportunities. And so whatever it is that God has put on your heart, whatever it is that those prayers that you have for yourself, your personal life, your professional life, You've got to trust God that he will manifest those things. And he's prepared you for those moments that, um, that he'll bring it all to fruition. And so I bless you all today. I thank you so much thank for the you. opportunity, First Lady. Um, so excited and so glad. Would love to stay connected with each and every one of you on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. I am Alexis Kerr. I'd love to stay connected to you all. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, continue to expect God's best for each and every one of you this year. Amen. All right. Outstanding. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, you just keep building. Each speaker just keeps building and taking us higher and higher. I love it. I love it. Lady Lasonia Hall, I am excited to hear Amen. from you. You are Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, First Lady Jacqueline Polk, and to my St. Luther MB Church family for including me on such an illustrious panel of God-fearing, awe-inspiring women. I'd also like to thank the ladies of Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church located in Oxford, Mississippi for their support this morning. I love you. My heart has been blessed and my soul anointed by the discussions shared and the mighty word that has been brought forth this morning. As we transition throughout this segment titled Success Manifestations, I am charged to offer pearls of wisdom regarding relationship and connection. Depending on where you are in life, this specific subject of relationships and connection can evoke a variety of emotions. To some women out there, relationships and connections may refer to opportunities such as starting a new job or having to create relationships and connections as you relocate to a new location. But to other women, relationships and connections may refer to the newness of starting a relationship or developing a love interest. To other women, thinking about relationships and connections may actually be painful because you may be reflecting on relationships that didn't fare well, resulting in love loss, regret, sadness, and remorse. But to some women, some of our seasoned women, the thought of relationships and connections may make you reflect on past successes, inspirational triumphs in your life, your legacies that you've built, and pivotal life moments. Wherever you are in your life as a woman, this 10 minutes that I have with you hopefully will shed light on how we can use our relationships and connections to grow spiritually, personally, and professionally. In order to get our personal and professional relationships in order, we must first make sure that our spiritual relationship is strong and solidified. Now, when I speak of spiritual relationships, my sisters, I'm not talking about your church title. I'm not concerned if you're the first lady or president of the mission or the motherboard, <laughs> head of the ushers, JMA, choir, kitchen, prison, and uh, praise team committee, sound ministry. I say that because many of us, both men and women, have fallen prey to thinking that just because we hold a title in the church, our spiritual relationship with God is secure. Let me say that again. See, many Christian women have sold themselves whoop tickets thinking that just because they hold a church title, they're spiritually connected. Sisters, when I refer to having a spiritual relationship with the Lord, I am referring to the relationship that pulls you through 
when you have cried off all of your mascara or at 3.07 a.m. when everyone in your home is asleep and you are lying in your bed wide awake needing your spiritual confidant. I'm referring to the relationship that you use while you're driving to work, praying, asking God for guidance and rejoicing knowing that he has already worked it out as you arrive at your destination. My sisters, in order to be successful, we must make sure that we are nurturing our spiritual relationship and connection because that is truly the foundation on which we will thrive. If your spiritual relationship is not intact, then everything else will be unsteady. As women, we are led to believe that we are in competition with one another. We often compare ourselves to each other and because of this, we question our own validity and self-worth. We allow the mental signals and the cues delivered by society to define who we are. God has anointed all of us with a special gift. From Jeremiah 29, 11, we know that he has ordained a purpose for each of our lives. And with this knowledge, we must grow spiritually, and reconnect ourselves to who we are and to the woman God has called each of us to be. Too many times we flounder because we haven't established the right connection with God. See, if we are truly connected to Christ, we no longer have to worry about the opinions of others. What has to remain center for each of us is living for Christ and doing his will. So how do we build our spiritual relationship? Well, my sisters before me have already laid the groundwork and I'm just telling you, this is confirmation. We must meditate. We must study the word of God and we must pray. Joshua 1.8 tells us to keep the book of the law always on your lips and that we have to meditate on it day and night, night and day, so that, when we, can, so that we can do everything that is written in the book. The scripture says, then and only then you will be prosperous and successful. Now, sisters, after you have grounded your spiritual relationship, then you can explore your personal relationships. That is the moment in which you get to know what you like and what you desire. See, women are so determined to get a man or to keep a man that we spend little time understanding, exploring, and most importantly, loving ourselves. You cannot bring true love into a relationship until you know the kind of love you need. And during the phase of spiritual reconnecting, God will show you what it will take to be successful. Our strong personalities and being opinionated are born out of our life experiences. And we don't need to apologize for that but we do need to conduct a soul search to truly understand who we are before we allow others in. And so sometimes we need to make sure that we're doing that because we need to ensure that we are ready for the exposure that comes from allowing other people in our lives. And sisters, in some cases, we are not ready. And this may be the reason why we find ourselves hurt time and time again. And what I'm saying does not apply solely to our romantic relationships, but also to our relationships to family and friends. And I've heard that echoed before me with sisters, uh, the speakers before me. If we are not truly comfortable with our relationship with ourselves, we may open our hearts, our lives, our thoughts to people who honestly may not have our best intentions at heart. This is typically when we find ourselves shocked and saddened by others because we didn't expect them to treat us that way or they transferred our personal information into a space where it didn't belong. My sisters, we must make time to learn how to love ourselves and to protect ourselves. We are so many things to so many people. And Christina said that all while she was ill, she was still taking care of her family, still taking care of her children, still cooking. But we fail sometimes to create a relationship with ourselves. So I challenge you today to let today be the day that you choose you. 
we've already developed that our basis for our spiritual connection is through meditation and Joshua 1 and 8 gives us that. But getting to know yourself personally requires carving out time, quiet time to journal, not enter your thoughts on social media. Nobody on social media needs to know all of your inner thoughts and your inner issues that's going on, but journal, keep it to yourself. Record your scripture, your favorite scripture, and then pour your heart out to God in writing. Get to know him and you in your writing. And then reflect on your writings occasionally. You'll be surprised at the lessons learned, both good and bad. Only until you've developed your spiritual and your personal relationships are you truly ready for those professional relationships. And Sister Alexis brought it home. See, the professional relationships require work. Because not everyone on your job is a believer. And therefore, you must work harder to navigate, navigate through this level. See, there will be areas that will test you far more than others. But if you are spiritually intact and personally in touch with yourself, you will learn how to conquer this level. A lot of what we face in our professional world is based on competition. But competition, if not handled constructively, can butt up against your Christian belief. See, we're taught to love one another. So when you're eagerly working to advance in your career, you will find, and in some cases have found, that not everyone is so loving and not everyone is so supportive of your success. But that is when you must seek out your spiritual confidant, not your coworker, but your spiritual confidant. And to my seasoned sisters in the professional world, if you are still dealing with these kinds of scenarios on your job, and let me suggest that you re-examine your spiritual and personal relationships with yourself and the Lord. I certainly, certainly pray that because of our effort to grow our spiritual and personal relationships, that our seasoned sisters are not, on, not guilty of creating habits in the workplace, that we are providing the access, as Alexis said, to other younger sisters and to brothers to help them grow Hopefully we are being guilty of fostering joy and love in our professional encounters. As I close, women, let me just remind us that we are a force from which we can move and change this world. We limit ourselves by not strengthening those relationships. Utilizing our connections is not only about producing positive personal results for ourselves, but there are expectations of us to lift up each other. We are beautiful. And extracting energy from everything and everyone is not of Christ. Pour into your spirit through meditation and prayer. Love and forgive yourself. Overcome the craziness in your professional life with the word of the Lord. And as we transition to my sister, Evangelist Kathy Bowman, let us be reminded to build a solid spiritual, personal, and professional love and relationship, loving God, Yourself and each other is critical to our success. Our success. Growing and cultivating this mindset is life changing. May God be forever with you, sisters, and keep you in his care. Amen. Amen. Oh my God. Awesome. Awesome work. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you, women of God. I just, I'm so inspired and so encouraged right now. And I just thank the Lord for this opportunity and speaking to uh, Reverend Charles Pope, my dear brother, and uh, beautiful Jackie Pope, my dear sister. Thank you both for this opportunity. I feel loved. And I thank you for this awesome opportunity to be able to come before these, po oh, these powerful group of women. Each and every one of you have blessed me on this morning. And I'm sure our uh, listening audience out here on Facebook Live and what have you are enjoying what we feel and what we heard. And this is so important that we come together and do these kind of things because what it does, we, we, we pour life on each other. See, we're life givers. So what the Lord has blessed us to be able to do among each other is that we give life. We are life givers. And this is a way uh, that God has blessed us to be a blessing to one another. So you bless me, all of you. You bless me, Sister Jackie, you bless me just putting this and coordinating this whole sessions together for your Women's Weekend. 
this is blessing me even now. So I praise God for it. I praise God for what I feel right now in my little sanctified soul. I praise God for the power and the strength that he's given me in order for me to go forward and do my kingdom work. All of us, everybody under the sound of my voice that I've heard on today, you are kingdom builders and the enemy don't want you to know who you are, but it, you know what? This, these, are, these are opportunities right here for us to realize when we hear, when we see, we open up that inner ear and we will let it sink into our inner ear so we can know the word of God by hearing the word of God. So hearing this is a, I'm telling you, is a blessing to my soul. Thank you so much for blessing us on today. And with just the thought of it, there's a scripture that says uh, in Ephesians uh, 3 and 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think according to the power that what worketh in us. We already have the power of God already in us. What we have to do, as some of you so eloquently said earlier, you have to catch hold of what you have and know who you are in order for you to do it and do it in confidence, knowing that you have the authority and the power to go forward and be a frontline soldier Ooh, for the kingdom of God. We are frontline soldiers. Don't you realize that God is building an army? The army rising up. And I want to be a part of that army. Yes, I have to tell you, yes, while we in this army, some folks die in the army of the Lord. But guess what? We have to keep going. I lost my dear brother uh, through the COVID on Easter Sunday morning. I thought I was going to die. I lost my brother. We prayed. We knew he was sick. His whole family was sick. Now you hear Christina. Smith, just so you know that that beautiful girl right there, Christina Smith is my daughter. And trust me, we believe God and trusted God for that woman. We prayed with her every day. I don't know if I was on that tribe, but I didn't have to be on the tribe. Mama was gonna pray for her daughter and her family. <laughs> but I have to tell you, so we believe God for my brother. And I tell you, it hurt me to my soul when I got a call and it said, he said, he's gone. I, I, I said, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? It hurt me to the core. Why? Because I didn't expect that. What are you saying, Kathy Bowman? On this battlefield, some of us won't make it. It was literally time for my brother to go home to be with the Lord. He was a man of God, pastor, successful pastor in Richmond, Virginia. But at the time I couldn't see that. I would just say, God, he's too young. He's younger than me. What are you doing? He said, I'm doing what I want to do. I speak and then live. I speak and then die. That's up to me. And I know what I'm doing. What I need you, you to do, Kathy, is trust me. That's what I do. You've been hearing the word. We've been going to church every Sunday. Now I'm putting you in a position where I'm pushing you to a whole new dimension in kingdom living. I'm pushing you to where you can walk in a whole new dimension of kingdom operation. I'm pushing you where you can learn how to walk into a whole dimen new dimension of kingdom strategies. Kingdom is what's important. Kingdom success is number one. To accomplish and to aim a purpose, that's success. But when you're coming to kingdom success, it's a whole nother level of living. God wants us to understand the importance of kingdom success. Oh, what do you mean? When, you, when we hear the scripture in Revelation say, when the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our God, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do we do that? That's when we learn how to lay ourselves aside 
aside from our thoughts. We won't lean to the flesh, lean not to our own understanding, not allow the enemy to bring fear. I heard my daughter say, Christina, how the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us love, power, and a what? Sound mind. Make no mistake about it, ladies. The enemy comes to distract us and bring fear, bring trouble, bring grief, bring, bring anxiety, uh, bring frustration, uh, bring paranoia. If you're not careful, the enemy will have you paranoid. You won't even go outside. Yes, we have to be careful, but you got to realize when the spirit of the Lord speaks to you in that inner ear, listen to the spirit of God, know his voice. Oh, sister Bowman, how I, do I do that? In Romans, it said, uh, Romans 1 and 11 said, for the Bible said, for the Lord said, for I long to see you that I may impart in you some spiritual gift to the in ye may be established. Spiritual success is knowing how we can walk in that spirit of being established. That means knowing who you are without a shadow of a doubt, knowing how to speak and, 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 and knowing how to put things out there and, and believe God for it and trust in God for it. Knowing that even when trouble come, death come, you still know how to stand up and be a power for God. Knowing how to stand up and say, Lord, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I'm going to live the way you want me to live. Getting that authority, making sure that we're in this war yet and we're going to fight. What are we going to fight for? We're going to fight for our families, our children. We're going to fight because it's our duty. That's our assignment. You know what? The young lady said it, the first lady said it at, at also about excess. In order for you to have excess, you have to have the spiritual mind to order to know what it is when it is when you get it. If you don't know what you are and who you are, you won't know you have access. So that we have to know how to walk in his power and listen when he say, okay, you got clearance, go ahead. Because at the end of the day, in the day we living in, there needs to be solutions. Not talking it, not just walking it, but let me see some solutions. What kind of solutions, Sister Bowman? This is our job, that men be saved. Because we've been having church, oh, that religiosity, oh, that's there. I know how to wave my hands in the air like I just don't care. But do I know how to bring somebody in when I'm going through myself? The devil tried to put me in a little corner when I lost my brother and get mad at everybody and say, why you do that to my brother? Listen, Miss Lady, I got a call on your life. I let I open the door for you to do a CD called I'm Praying For You. And I need you to get in that, get back up here and do some praying. I don't need you to solve. Let me do my will, but I need you to continue because there's a charge I have to keep and there's a God I have to glorify. I need you to make me smile in the midst of things you don't understand. Make me smile in the midst of trouble and, and fears that come, even though it comes, uh, even though it'll come, but I got to say, if I have to die, let me die in this army of the Lord because I will not fear. You will not steal my joy. You will not destroy my family. You will not distract me to a point that I forget who I am and I'm walking around like a zombie. The devil is a liar because I have the authority of God in my life and I can walk, hallelujah, without fear. Thank God for kingdom authority. Thank God for kingdom power. Thank God uh, uh, for kingdom strategies and kingdom purposes. Thank God for kingdom righteousness. God help me to advance in your kingdom so I will be doing your perfect will. I want to be, I want to live. So there's a song my mama sang. I want to live so God can use me anytime and anywhere. Help me, oh God. Oh, I feel your presence now. Help me, hey, to learn how to obey you. Yeah, you shut us down. He shut us down. But guess what? He's given us greater ideas and greater strategies in, in order to reach men and women that needs to be saved. Oh yeah, we out here. Yeah, we may have a little quirks and uh, a little things going wrong We're trying to get on this virtual thing and using this, uh, the, you know, all, all these new uh, type of the, uh, things that we're doing that, to have people watching us on Facebook Live and all that kind of stuff. I'm still learning how to talk that, 
that logo about how what, what is it we using now the phone or what what is the instagram i'm still learning that but guess what it's a new day and a new way he's given us an opportunity to reach the masses oh to reach the masses oh men of every birth for their answer jesus is the key he said if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men unto me. God, help me to draw all men, not to worry about all the uncertainties. Yes, is there. Yes, is important. But let me give me the strength and the will to pray and trust and believe and obey. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. How many of you out there know that it's the Lord that is going to be the one that's going to keep you through all yes. this? Yes. Hallelujah. Trouble will come. Heartaches will come. Sickness will come, but God is able to keep you from falling. He's able. If he's done it before, he's done it again. Some of you are under the sign of my bus. I promise you, the Lord let me know. It's so much frustration and aggravation out there right now. Everything aggravates me, y'all. Don't let me start. But guess what? Through all the ag aggravation, let me get a call from one of our members. I'm going to pray. I'm going to gonna we gonna get that breakthrough because it's a charge I have to keep. Kingdom authority. Remember your charge. Kingdom you. authority. Kingdom success. Remember, hallelujah, your assignment. That's what God is all, already walk, getting us to walk into. And in my closing, I want to tell you in order to be successful, uh, and, and, and for your sign, for your assignment. Uh, these are the crucial areas that you have to walk in in your everyday life. First of all, we must see and measure the truth. As somebody said so eloquently, we, sh we should see and measure the truth about ourselves. We should understand how do we control our attitude and respond in the midst of various circumstances. Number three, how to embrace the good about ourselves without ignoring the bad and the ugly within ourselves. Deal with you, know you, and know what makes you tick, but then also know the power you have in him where you can overcome self. Number four, when in a leadership role, what is our perspective on status in power? You have to understand when you're doing the will of the Father, he may change horses in the middle of the stream on you. Got to do that. You'll you, you be going real good one kind of way, and it's all good and successful, looking good. Everybody know your name, say my name. Then all of a sudden, God said, no, I want you to go to another page. This is how you're going through a new process. A tr a trust the process. Let that go. But no, God, I was comfortable right there. It was good. People was coming. No, trust me. Listen to me. Get your mind off of this, not lean not to your own understanding, but trust me and if you, so you'll be able to follow my lead. Come on, y'all. And then number four, lastly, it says how we react to bias and undress treatment. Very important that we keep the right attitude ha, as we walk on this journey. You can't tell, I know you told, you're able to tell your, your brother and your sister off and I know you're able Maybe every now and then to tell your spouse up in some areas in some situations, you got to learn how to zip it and keep it to yourself and let God do the work. Y'all understand? That's that's success. Those are king. That's how we walk in kingdom success in this time that we're walking in now. I, I'm telling you, you all can witness it. You church go and bless women of God that the mentality of the body of Christ has shifted. It really had, we, we had to go with it. But in order, because it was giving us an opportunity to go back to the simplicity of our faith. And listen, this, these, these talks, these prayers, these opportunities, it's powerful, but we have to still keep our mind and understanding in our hearts and in our spirit, man, that kingdom success will always give solution and will be the answer. Thank you so much uh, for this time. Hallelujah. I feel his presence. Oh, don't y'all get Praise excited. God. I Praise feel his God. presence, y'all. I do. Yes. Praise God. Thank you so bless much. God. Bless God. Outstanding. Oh, bless God. Ooh, ladies, I am so pumped. I, I have to tell you, 
<laughs> you have spoken life. Thank you. Spoken life. I heard it, and I know that women on, I'm, I'm looking on Facebook here, and I promise you, there's no questions. It's a whole lot of, it's a whole lot of people chiming in, and, and you've given them words of confirmation. And so My God. each of you, and right now, there's a group of women <clears throat> that I would like to have to join us on our Zoom call right now. If you would please start your video uh, and um, unmute so you can say hello. Those of you that are speakers, keep your video up. I don't want you to leave, but I do want to welcome. This is a group of some of my sister first ladies. These are fellow first ladies <clears throat> here in the uh, Jackson, Mississippi area. And we have come together to reinforce each other. Reinforce each other. We cover each other in prayer. We can cry with each other if we need to, um, but we are, we are that, that strong tribe for each other. And I wanted each of them, as many as could, to join in on this morning before we do our closing prayer. Because saints of God, if you haven't been already, I, I, want, you, I want to tell you to make sure you are remembering to pray for your pastor, and his family, your pastor and your first lady, because this period that we're going through as it affects the church, it's something that our pastors have never had to experience in their ministry. And no pastor wants any member to fall behind or to get missed or lost. And so as we're using tools that may look like we have everything all together, I promise you, um, we need your prayers. And so I see on, let's see, Br uh, Brandy's back on. I see Michelle, Tanya is back on. I see that uh, Lady Charmelita James is here from New Mount, uh, New Mount Mariah. Glad to have you, dear. Michelle Wheatley from Relevant Church. Can you hear me, ladies? All right, I see Michelle is on. Let's see, whom else is on? Uh, I see LaRose Moore is on from Stronger Hope and uh, Karen Johnson. I believe I saw Karen Johnson. She's with Abundance of Grace Christian Church. Uh, whom else is on here? Uh, I think that's all I see for right now. Ladies, I just want you to know that I'm glad you took the time to join in. Uh, some others may come on later. Stephanie Parker Smith with Crossroads, uh, Monique Montgomery with Greater St. James, Harriet Sutton with Fairfield Missionary Baptist Church, uh, Natalie Russell with Greater Fairview are all ones that had uh, registered and were on here earlier on today and may join us now. Um, I will, you know what, Karshina, we don't have to go to the next slide. I'll just talk it through. We were prepared to move on to um, Kathy Sykes discussing success in claiming your voice. Unfortunately, she is unable to be with us on today. Uh, and I had asked her to speak about success in claiming our voice from the standpoint of exercising our right to vote. And so I know I, I'm not going to say all the words that she would have said, but I would tell you women of God, as we look around, we know that it's time for the church to stand up and to stand strong. And sometimes I think we minimize our strength as women. For example, do you realize women have outvoted men in sheer numbers in every election since 1964? every election since 1964. Women don't play, all right? And in 2016, 63% of those eligible women voted versus 59% of men. Women vote and we have to, I think because we have that connection and we see, see maybe perhaps even a little bit better or closer to our heart, those issues that are heart issues that are important. And women of color, we represent nearly one third of all eligible women voters. There's power in those numbers. 
ladies, but only if we vote. So what Kathy was going to encourage you to do today is she's get out and vote. You make sure you vote. It does, you vote for whom you want to vote. We just want to make sure that we, when you're talking about success, sometimes success requires you to use your feet and walk into a situation and take action. God doesn't have to perform a miracle all the time. Some stuff we can do and we can certainly go and vote and women, we also have an enormous ability to influence others to vote. You yes. know grown children and grown uh, nephews and nieces that uh, have some of these little lame excuses I'm hearing running around here why some millennials aren't voting. Uh, 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 no, no, no. We can use our influence and encouragement to have everyone realize success also means claiming your vote, your voice, because if we don't do it, who will? It's up to us. All right. So Kathy would have said it a little differently. That's Jackie Polk's spin on what she would have said, but I think you got the message. Well, ladies, again, as I look at the stream on Facebook, uh, I am seeing just a lot of women that are agreeing and were blessed by everything you had to say. I'm not seeing questions. Uh, I'm seeing folks that are saying, hey, this confirms, thank you, I needed to hear this. And that's, that's what this has all been about. And so, you know, we weren't able to come together in our family life center. I didn't miss it. I'll be honest. <laughs> we are all together here. There's a powerful group, over 100 women that are watching on Facebook. And that number has been 150 and even higher. And so God moves as long as we don't stop. He will give us what we need to step forward and move ahead. I want to, before we close out, I want to thank our greeters on Facebook. You have been marvelous today. Chanel, Rosie, Dorothy, and Tracy, thank you so much. And there's a lady running this live stream who has been super busy on this morning. And Karshina Bailey, kudos Karshina, you have absolutely been wonderful to work with. I, I think Karshina looked at me and, and was like, first lady, what do you want to do? But you know what? She's one of those people you just drop the seed and she's one that can help bring it to fruition. I love that. That's a gift that you have, Karshina. God bless you. Now, our last speaker was going to be Minister Tabitha Goodner, a dear little sister of mine. And I ask that you keep her in prayer She's with her family now at the homegoing service for her mother. And so we're going to hold the Goodner family up in our prayers uh, as we prepare to depart. I'm going to ask Evangelist Bowman if you would please bring this gathering to a close in prayer right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Blessings, oh God. Don't stop praying. For the Lord is nigh, keep on praying. He, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Keep on praying, he'll answer. You hallelujah. Keep on praying, ladies. Be encouraged. Keep on praying. Don't you stop. Keep on praying. He answer you. Hey. Glory to God. Father God, I thank you for this time that you've given us with these powerful women of God that you've called, oh God, even from, your, from their mother's womb for such a time as this. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this season. 
thank you for this session. We don't understand everything, Father God, but you know, hallelujah, you know, God, help each and every one of us, oh God, each and every one of us, oh God, to receive what you have ministered to us today through the revelatory word of God. Help us to receive it and allow it, oh God, oh God, allow it to go forward as we bless as we pray, as we touch, as we give life, oh God, to the many people, oh God, that we know and love, to the people that we don't even know. Help us and use us, oh God, to be able to understand when we get the access that we'll be able to find solutions, oh God. Lord, help us to know through prayer, through meditation, oh God. Help us to be the Joshua one and eight women. Oh God, that we pray without ceasing. Help us, oh God to understand who we are in you. We rebuke the spirit of anxiety. We rebuke the spirit of depression. We rebuke every spirit of paranoia and every spirit of fear to come to, that comes in from time to time to taunt us. We bind it now in the name of Jesus, but we loose the spirit of peace, Ooh, love, joy, understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you, Father. Help us, oh God, help our families, help our pastors, help our husbands, give them the strength they need. Touch their minds, their bodies, and oh God, endow them with the power from on high. And Lord, we'll give your name the glory. Bless each and every facilitator that is under sound of my voice. Father, I speak a spirit of peace, I speak a spirit of finances that will rest upon everybody under the sound of my voice, that they may do what you called them to do. Lord, they have vision. Oh God, give them what to do. Give them what to say. Give them how to do it. Give them the strategies they need. Oh God, and the creativity they need to make this thing work, that we may find kingdom solutions. Oh God, and we'll give your name the praise. I rebuke any sickness now that is among any one of us under the sound of my voice. I speak total healing from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you for the victory now. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. Ooh, bless God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Ladies, stay on Zoom. Don't close out your connection. Uh, Karshina, if you 